The Scientific Advisory Committee is recommending that food system sustainability be an integral part of the dietary guidelines for the first time. What's that mean? It means that we are finally ready to cope with the realities of the production of food and the pressures it puts on our natural resources. Water, air, soil, it's, uh, it's got to be considered if we want to have long-term food security for populations. What then is a sustainable diet? Well, it's a dietary pattern that is uh, more plant-based and when we are making dietary advice to the citizens, um, we take into consideration what the environmental footprint is of various kinds of food production. So let's take an example, a heart-healthy almond. I read in your article that it takes something like 2.8 liters of water to produce a single almond. And they're grown in California where water is a great premium right now. So does this suggest that we shouldn't be growing or eating almonds? Well, I want to tell you I love almonds and they are heart healthy. But it means that we need to sort of think about the whole big picture uh, across all of the different foods that we eat and calibrate to the needs of future generations so that we don't use up all the resources. You were Deputy Agriculture Secretary. You know this sector very, very well. There are some who say that what this really is is an attack on meat, that for the beef that is growing in demand around the planet, consumes so much water, produces methane, that a sustainable guideline would suggest much less red meat. Is that true? It is true, and it is consistent with dietary guidance of past years. So the dietary guidelines come out every five years, the last iteration in 2010. That recommended eat a more plant-based diet. Same recommendation is coming from the advisory committee this year. They're just adding the additional rationale for that recommendation, and that's sustainability. Well, what about fish? Uh, we talked about b beef, but people are told to eat more fish, but a lot of fisheries are endangered because they've been overfished. So does this say do less of that? So that's a perfect example, Frank, right? So Institute of Medicine said everyone should eat two servings of fish per week. The reality is Americans don't do that. But what if everyone woke up tomorrow and followed that recommendation? We deplete the oceans. It's just a perfect example about why we have to bring the sustainability discussions into the same fold as the dietary guidance discussions. Many are going to say that this is just another layer or suggestion of another layer of regulation that's being piled on top of regulation. What is your response to that? Well, these are guidelines. They're not regulations. We hope that people follow these guidelines. They're really directed at nutritional professionals. And then there's a public campaign to try to get them to the people on the ground, you and me, to learn about what we should individually be eating. But they do have important um, impact on federal nutrition assistance programs, as well as the rations that our military get. There is science behind this. That's the purpose, largely mm -hmm. the purpose of your article. Mm -hmm. What is it? What does it tell us? The science is strong and consistent, and the advisory committee wouldn't be in this space if it were not. And that is that um, we need to change the way we do food production and our overall dietary patterns if we're going to have that long-term food security. Brazil, Sweden, some other countries have already incorporated these sorts of guidelines into their, uh, their way of doing business. What are they doing that we are not? Well, Brazil, whoa, they're the outlier. They came out with new dietary guidelines last fall, and they actually set up a different category of food that we don't talk about in this country, ultra-processed food. So the chicken nuggets versus the fresh chicken. Um, they really are saying avoid ultra-processed food altogether. In this country, we talk about processed food and, and non-processed food, but those baby carrots you and I buy in the supermarket that are certainly healthy, they're processed. So the verbiage in our country hasn't really kept pace with the transformation in the supermarket. If I listen to you and if I read this article closely, then I see a correlation between being in sustainable, uh, having sustainable agriculture and having nutritional food. Am I right about that? 
Absolutely. They go hand in hand. And I believe that a lot of people are looking for guidance in their shopping habits. What are the foods that are sustainably produced? People want to know more about where their food comes from, who produced that food, how it was produced. So bringing together this dietary guidance with sustainability concerns is really what is needed at this time. And how does all of this affect economic sustainability for those who are producing the food? What does it mean for them? Well, I've spent my career fighting for farmers and ranchers and their livelihoods. So I don't want anyone to see this as an attack on farmers and ranchers. We actually are at a time in our country where we have to repopulate our working lands with the next generation of young people. We want them to have good livelihoods. We want them to be successful community members. And so we need to bring them to the table and have this discussion as we sort of plot out our future. Thank you for thinking about the future and thanks for the article. Thank you.